free man and speaking out. His first comments since leaving his prison cell. I've been in nowhere USA for the last nine years doing nothing. Tonight, where he went just after getting out. Presidential sabotage on the same day President Trump attends a golf tournament, he appears to undercut his Secretary of State, tweeting Tillerson is wasting his time trying to negotiate with Little Rocket Man. SOS, the crisis in Puerto Rico, our cameras capturing the tears of joy at the sight of FEMA support. Terror attacks, twin stabbings leaving multiple people dead in two cities, the possible ISIS connection. Ripped to shreds, an engine on the double-decker jet from Paris to Los Angeles coming apart mid-air. And dangerous move, the pro athlete reaching into a cage to pet a lion when the animal suddenly turns on him. From ABC News, this is ABC World News Tonight. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday. I'm Tom Yamas, and we begin tonight with O.J. Simpson walking out of prison a free man. The controversial former football star speaking out for the first time tonight since his top secret exit from the Lovelock Correctional Center. The Nevada Department of Corrections taking this shot of Simpson signing release papers just after midnight. Simpson granted parole back in July. You see the 70-year-old ex-athlete walking out of prison in the dead of night. ABC's Kenneth Moten is in Las Vegas. Simpson's first stop and starts us off tonight. Juice, juice. How's it feel to be out? Tonight, O.J. Simpson is speaking as a free man. Y'all stalking me. <laughs> Jesus, man. Where are you, where are you guys headed? Uh, why no, none of your business. A camera catching the infamous football star off guard at a Nevada gas station five hours after he walked out of prison in the cover of darkness. I'm in the car for the last five hours, so how do I know how it feels to be out? The man who spent years in front of the camera is now asking for privacy. I've been in nowhere USA for the last nine years doing nothing. Nothing has changed in my life. What do you guys, I mean, what do you expect? I mean, there's nothing changed. Now. Please, uh, can I have a break here? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have God a good bless. Night. Take Thank care, you. guys. Yeah. Nothing's changed. Since that early morning encounter, Simpson has been out of sight, oh, but out. we've learned he's now in Las Vegas. The media circus around Simpson prompted prison officials to keep his release secret. Only three people knew when he'd leave, and a decoy van was deployed to keep Simpson's cover. Simpson, still in his prison-issued denim, signed his parole papers shortly after midnight. Simpson's home for the last nine years, Lovelock Correctional, serving time for armed robbery at a Las Vegas hotel. Tonight, the Hall of Famer in hiding, but a move to Florida in the works so he can be near his children. He wants to go to Florida. He wants to see his family and hug his family. But Florida's attorney general fighting the transfer, writing our state should not become a country club for this convicted criminal. Simpson facing another battle from the estates of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman, owing $60 million after being found liable for their deaths. Whatever we can take from him, will be a measure of punishment. Simpson reportedly racked up around a half million dollars from his NFL pension alone while in prison. But that money, untouchable. And Kenneth Moten joins us live from Las Vegas tonight. How long is O.J. Simpson expected to be in Vegas? And will he go to Florida where some of his family members live? Tom, it could be several weeks. Florida is the plan, though, for O.J. Simpson. But he and his team still haven't filed that parole transfer paperwork. Once they do, Florida has 45 days to respond. Tom? Kenneth Moten for us in Las Vegas tonight. Kenneth, thank you. Let's turn to politics now and President Trump sounding off on Twitter from North Korea to Puerto Rico. But it's those tweets on North Korea drawing the most attention. President Trump catching the action on the 14th green of the President's Cup golf tournament. Earlier, appearing to undercut his Secretary of State for trying to negotiate with North Korea, calling it, quote, a waste of time. And North Korea not the only target as the president took aim again at the mayor of San Juan. ABC's David Wright is in New Jersey with the president tonight. Tonight, diplomacy Trump style. The commander in chief on the move in New Jersey, headed not to high level meetings, but to the president's cup golf tournament. Trump made it clear he doesn't think much of the Secretary of State's trip to China this weekend, trying to broker an end to North Korea's nuclear program.
I told Rex Tillerson, our wonderful Secretary of State, that he is wasting his time trying to negotiate with little Rocket Man. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself and for his regime. Today, Trump not only taunted Kim Jong-un, he publicly undercut his own top diplomat. Being nice to Rocket Man hasn't worked in 25 years. Why would it work now? Then, just moments after sending that tweet, Trump appeared in the grand reviewing stand set up at the golf tournament. Today, Trump also took time to defend the relief effort in Puerto Rico against mounting criticism. We've done a great job with the almost impossible situation, he tweeted, outside of the fake news or politically motivated ingrates. This weekend, Trump teed off on the mayor of San Juan, accusing her of poor leadership ability. They want everything to be done for them when it should be a community effort, he tweeted. Calling us lazy? Seriously? You know, it, it's just unbecoming of the values of the American people. Today, speaking to ABC's Alex Perez, the mayor blasted back. Yes, we are a small island covered by the law out of water, but we may be small, but we're huge in dignity and valor. And David joins us live just outside the President's Golf Club in Bedminster. David, President Trump is heading to Puerto Rico on Tuesday. The mayor of San Juan says she is willing to meet with him. She said she is willing to meet with him, but suggested the, ex the invitation hadn't been extended yet. She said to Alex Perez, what's more important is that Trump look in the eyes of the Puerto Rican people. And she says you don't have to speak Spanish to see the pain in people's eyes. Tom? David Wright for us tonight. David, thank you. Let's head to Puerto Rico now for more on that growing humanitarian crisis. Millions desperate for food, water, and fuel, but some signs of hope in that region tonight, especially in the hard-hit cities. FEMA now approving 63,000 applications for $7 million worth of assistance, also reporting the delivery of 2 million liters of water and 1 million meals. But still, so many communities face dire conditions with disappearing resources. Our team on the ground in Puerto Rico tonight, here's Alex Perez with more. Tonight, as supplies and other necessities trickle into San Juan, people living just some 25 miles away wondering if they've been forgotten. Nobody, nobody. Nobody's come to help. The Reyes family in an isolated part of Comedio say they have been fending for themselves. 11 days now, no power, no cell service, no easily available drinking water. The hurricane ripping the roofs right off in this sprawling valley community. The river water, now their means of bathing and cleaning up what's left of their homes. What's the hardest part? The babies. There's no water to drink. I did very little. But in another small town, Juncos, aid from FEMA finally arriving. It's not enough. It's not fast enough. They know that. We know that. In San Juan, where lines at gas stations go on for blocks, fuel trucks now being escorted by armed officers. We have no food. We have no water. Buildings are becoming human, human persons, human cages. More help already on the way. Cargo ships filled with supplies. The massive Navy hospital ship Comfort arriving this week. 6,400 troops already on the ground. With communications crippled, Lieutenant General Jeffrey Buchanan, now in charge of military operations here, says the challenge is finding where the needs are so they can be met. Right. We are not satisfied with what we've been able to do so far. These people deserve more help and we're going to bring it. Alex Perez in San Juan tonight. Uh, power still a major issue there. Much of the island in the dark or on generators. We have some new shocking estimates tonight, Alex, on what are we looking at? Well, Tom, officials here tell me it could be a very long six months before the entire island is back on the power grid. But I have to tell you, resilience really stands out here. Everyone we talk to determined to rebuild. Tom? It does, but that six months is going to be so difficult. All right, Alex, thanks so much. Turning overseas now and the breaking developments in two possible terror attacks tonight. Police in Marseille investigating a deadly knife attack that killed two women at the train station there. Soldiers killing that suspect. And in Canada, surveillance video shows a man running down a police blockade near a stadium, then attacking him and injuring others. New clues emerging tonight, triggering new concerns. ABC's James Longman in Marseille for us with the late details. Tonight, two countries, two knife attacks, and police unraveling possible terror connections. 
In France, at Marseille's main train station, two women killed. One had her neck slit, the other stabbed in the stomach, just 17 and 20 years old. This woman just feet away from the attack, recounting what she felt was a nightmare unfold. He attacked a woman who was sitting five or six meters away from me. It felt like a nightmare. And then he started shouting, Allah Akbar. God is great. ISIS claiming responsibility tonight. The attacker rushed at soldiers as they responded. They shot and killed him. A different attack in Edmonton, Canada. Watch as this car strikes a police officer, launching him 15 feet in the air. The suspect then getting out and stabbing his target before fleeing. The officer now recovering in the hospital. Canadian authorities spotting the suspect at a checkpoint two hours later in a U-Haul truck. He fled again, hitting four pedestrians before flipping the truck and finally being detained. Police say the ISIS-type flag found in his car, a clue perhaps to his dark motive. It was determined that these incidents are being investigated as acts of terrorism. Well, Tom, although not connected, these sorts of lone wolf attacks, which we've seen so many of across Europe, are linked in their motive to cause real terror and panic. Tom? Frightening moments there in France and Canada. All right, James, thank you. Next to the violent clashes at voting booths in Barcelona, at least 750 people injured, some seriously, during a police crackdown over a referendum on breaking away from Spain. ABC's Terry Moran is there with the latest for us. On the streets of Barcelona today, a harsh crackdown. Spanish National Police opened fire using rubber bullets on people trying to cast their votes. Polling stations raided, voters thrown out, an old man dragged away, his dog tossed aside, a woman dazed and bloodied. Tonight, officials say more than 800 injured across this region. And still they came, defying the government, waiting in line to cast their ballots and answer a momentous question. Should this region, Catalonia, with its own language and ancient history, secede from Spain and become an independent country? The spirit here is incredible. Everybody who votes gets cheered like a hero, and the chant goes up, Bucarem, we will vote. But the Spanish government, which declared this vote illegal, vows even harsher measures in the coming days, stunning leaders of the independence movement. The Spanish government has turned crazy. Both sides are digging in, and the violence on the streets here today has only hardened these people's determination to secede and made clear the Spanish government isn't going to let them go without a fight. Tom? Terry Moran in Barcelona for us tonight. Terry, thank you. Now to the new Coast Guard report on a disaster at sea exactly two years ago today. The sinking of the El Faro cargo ship near the Bahamas killed 33 people back in 2015. Coast Guard officials say the captain misreading both the strength of Hurricane Joaquin at the time and the power of his own ship, that all contributed to the disaster. That even the Coast Guard itself shared some of the blame. The reports contains more than 30 safety measures intended to prevent future loss of life. Now to another Sunday of protest in the NFL. The demonstrations during the national anthem continuing this week, many teams also locking arms in a show of unity. Reaction to President Trump's tweets about player protest still reverberating around NFL stadiums. Here's ABC's Ron Claiborne. Across the NFL, players once again taking a knee during the national anthem. In London, these Miami Dolphins players in protest and these six Buffalo Bills players kneeling. These new protests following the president's tweet on Saturday, very important that NFL players stand tomorrow and always for the playing of our national anthem. Respect our flag and our country. In San Francisco, 30 49ers players once again protesting and taking a knee like their former quarterback Colin Kaepernick, who initially sparked the uproar with his protests against alleged police mistreatment of minorities. And Oakland's Marshawn Lynch getting ready for his game with the shirt reading, Everybody versus Trump. Still, the debate rages on, provoking support for protesting players among some, outrage among others. In Oklahoma, these fans using jerseys to wash cars. This fan even burning his tickets. The protest generally, you okay with him? I am. We are. I think Very we're a nation so. of free speech, aren't we? Yeah. I think First we all agree on that. But today, Tom, far fewer players knelt during the playing of the Star Spangled Banner. No owners joined them. And even where there were protests among fans in the stands, the reaction was far more muted than just a week ago. Tom? Ron, thank you. There's still much more ahead on World News tonight this Sunday. An engine explodes on a packed flight above the Atlantic, 